to know the function of ribonucleus and carboxypeptidase A enzymes, to know the structure of ribonucleus and carboxypeptidase A, and also to know the mechanism of action of ribonucleus and carboxypeptidase A. Ribonucleus and carboxypeptidase A are important enzymes required for metabolism of nucleotides and proteins in the cell. Both these enzymes serve as good paradigms to highlight the relationship between structure and function of a protein. We'll first talk about ribonuclease and its classification. Ribonuclease is a protein whose main function is to cleave RNA. It causes a degradation of RNA in the cell. Many different classes of ribonucleases are found in nature and each kind of enzyme has its own specific mechanism of action. All organisms contain many different classes of ribonucleases, including that degradation of RNA is an important molecular process that has been conserved throughout evolution from ancient times. Ribonucleases are broadly classified into two categories, endoribonucleases and exoribonucleases. Examples of endoribonucleases include RNase H, RNase 3, RNase 1 and RNase P. Examples of exoribonucleases include polynucleotide phosphorylase, RNase PH, RNase R, RNase D, RNase T, exoribonuclease 1. Ribonuclease was isolated for the very first time from the bovine pancreas by Dubos and Thompson in 1938 and crystallized by Punitz in 1940. Ribonuclease A lends itself to easy experimental study primarily because it is remarkably thermostable and also it's available in high concentration from an easily accessible source, the bovine pancreas. Ribonuclease A was the first enzyme and the third protein from which a correct amino acid sequence was determined. It catalyzes the cleavage of phosphodiester bond between the 5' prime ribose of a nucleotide and the phosphate group attached to the 3' prime ribose of an adjacent pyrimidine nucleotide. Cleavage of this bond gives rise to the formation of a 2', prime, 3' prime cyclic phosphate which is then hydrolyzed to the corresponding 3' prime nucleoside phosphate. Talking about the structure of ribonuclease, ribonuclease A is an unglycosylated protein composed of only 124 amino acid residues. It contains 19 of the 20 amino acids lacking only tryptophan. The amino acid sequences of many ribonuclease A homologues have been identified, making RNase A a model system for vertebrate molecular evolution. Study of the sequence of RNase A in a range of species shows that RNase A is a modern protein that is evolving rapidly. The secondary structure of ribonucleus consists of four antiparallel beta sheets and three short alpha helices. RNase A contains four disulfide bonds which are critical to the stability of the native enzyme. Two of these disulfide bonds lie between an alpha helix and a beta sheet and contribute more to the thermal stability than do the other two. Now we'll talk about the mechanism of action of ribonuclease. The action of RNase A involves attack on a phosphodiester bond making two adjacent nucleotides in an RNA molecule leading to its cleavage. Continuous action of RNase A on the RNA substrate finally leads to its degradation into monoribonucleotides. The reaction mechanism involves two steps. Two important amino acid residues that participate in the catalytic reaction of RNase A are the histidine 12 and the histidine 119. Histidine 12 participates as a general base catalyst. The lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen of histidine 12 of RNase A abstracts a proton from the 2' hydroxyl of the ribose sugar in an RNA molecule, creating a negative charge on the oxygen of the hydroxyl group. This negatively charged 2' oxygen then acts as a nucleophile and makes an intramolecular nucleophilic attack on the phosphate group on the adjacent carbon. Histidine 119 of RNase A on the other hand participates as a general acid catalyst. It donates a proton to the phosphate group. 
the coupled action of histidine 12 and histidine 119 on the 2 prime OH and the phosphodiester bond respectively leads to a two proton shift as shown in the figure on your screen. As a result of this, the 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond with the adjacent nucleotide is cleaved with a concomitant generation of a 2 prime 3 prime cyclic phosphodiester intermediate. In the second step, the cyclic phosphodiester is hydrolyzed to a 3 prime monophosphate group. RNase A is specific for pyrimidine nucleoside linkages. Now we'll talk about ribonuclease and protein folding and the famous Anfinsen's experiment. Ribonuclease is an enzyme that has historical importance not only because it was the first enzyme to be sequenced, but was also the first enzyme used to study protein folding. The famous experiment conducted by Anfinsen is outlined in the figure shown on your screen. In this experiment, ribonuclease A was denatured by incubating it with 8 molar urea. Also, the disulfide bonds in RNA-SA were oxidized by beta-mercaptoethanol. The denatured protein was now in the random coil form. It lost its characteristic secondary structure and was found to be completely inactive. This was then followed by removal of urea followed by aerial oxidation of the protein to regenerate the disulfide bonds. This resulted in a fully active protein. Interestingly, of all the 105 possibilities, the ribonucleus protein folded only into the precise native conformation resulting in a perfectly active enzyme. This led to the conclusion that all the information required for the correct folding of the protein is contained in the primary amino acid sequence of the protein. A second set of Anfinsen's experiments involved the removal of only the beta mercaptoethanol from the denatured protein leading to the formation of non-specific disulfide bonds between amino acids 26 and 40 and 84 and 95. This was followed by removal of urea. This resulted in a scrambled protein which was completely inactive. However, further addition of trace amounts of beta mercaptoethanol led to the conversion of the scrambled RNase A into its fully active native form wherein the disulfide bonds were between amino acids 26 and 84 and 40 and 95. Thus, the native conformation of the protein is the most thermodynamically stable structure. The figure shown on your screen outlines the various steps in the Anfinsen's experiment. Now we'll talk about the second enzyme, which is the carboxypeptidase A enzyme. Carboxypeptidase A is a digestive enzyme secreted by the pancreas into the small intestine. Its function is to digest proteins and peptides in the small intestine into smaller peptides by hydrolyzing the peptide bonds. It preferentially hydrolyzes the peptide bond at the carboxy end of those amino acid residues that have aromatic side chains or have branched hydrocarbon side chains. This enzyme is also referred to as CPA. Besides digestion, carboxypeptidase A is also involved in post-translational modification of proteins, blood clotting and reproduction. Coordination of the enzyme with zinc ion is crucial for its activity and hence this enzyme is also classified as a metalloexopeptidase. Loss of zinc leads to loss of activity of the enzyme. However, zinc can be replaced by other divalent metal ions such as cobalt and nickel. Figure on your screen shows you the reaction catalyzed by carboxypeptidase A. Now we'll talk about the structure and mechanism of carboxypeptidase A. Carboxypeptidase A is a single polypeptide chain enzyme of 307 amino acids. It is a compact globular protein consisting of both alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. The zinc ion is crucial to the activity of this enzyme. Bovine pancreatic carboxypeptidase A contains 1 gram atom of zinc per molecular weight that is 34,300 Daltons. The figure shown on your screen shows a picture of a space filled model of carboxypeptidase A when it is unbound versus when it is bound to its substrate in the substrate binding pocket. When the enzyme is not bound to the substrate, 
the zinc ion within the active site of the enzyme is coordinated to five amino acid residues with two imidazole nitrogens of histidine 69 and histidine 196 and the two carboxylate oxygens of glutamate 72 and a water molecule to form a distorted tetrahedral. Altogether, five amino acid residues are involved in substrate binding. Arginine 71, Arginine 127, Asparagine 144, Arginine 145, Tyrosine 248 and Glutamate 270. The figure on your screen shows you the pentavalent coordination of the zinc at the center active site of the carboxypeptidase A enzyme. Once a substrate is bound to the enzyme, the coordination number of the zinc ion can vary from 5 to 6. The zinc ion polarizes a carbonyl-carbon bond which makes a carbonyl-carbon more susceptible to nucleophilic attack. The mechanism of carboxypeptidase A mediated cleavage of the peptide bond at the C-terminal end of aromatic amino acid residues in a protein chain is shown to you in the diagram on your screen. This diagram uses glycyl tyrosine as an example of a substrate. The substrate fits into the non-polar pocket in the enzyme active site. There are two main types of inter and intramolecular interactions that are at play during hydrolysis of the peptide bond by carboxypeptidase A. At the active site, the zinc ion besides being coordinated to histidine 69, glutamate 72 and histidine 196 is also coordinated to the water molecule. The tyrosine 248 of the enzyme makes a hydrogen bond with the NH of the peptide bond to be cleaved. The positively charged arginine 145 of the enzyme electrostatically interacts with a negatively charged terminal carboxyl group of glycyl tyrosine, which is a substrate. A similar electrostatic interaction occurs between the negatively charged glutamate 245 and the positively charged amino terminal end of the substrate. A water molecule coordinated to zinc ion attacks the carbonyl carbon of the peptide bond to be cleaved. The role of the negatively charged glutamate 270 is to abstract a proton from the water molecule. Simultaneously, the oxygen of the water makes a bond to the carbon of the carbonyl carbon of the peptide bond to be cleaved, generating a tetrahedral intermediate. The formation of this unstable intermediate results in scission of the sessile bond generating the tyrosine residue and the glycine residue bound to the enzyme. The induced fit pathway is sometimes used to describe the mechanism of action of carboxypeptidase A, according to which the enzyme action involves a change in the structure of conformation of the active site upon binding of the substrate to the enzyme. Electrostatic interactions of zinc ion with the substrate induce electrostatic changes in the active site, making the substrate poised for hydrolysis. Now we'll summarize the major points of this module. Ribonuclease is an enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of RNA via a 2 prime, 3 prime cyclic phosphodiester intermediate. The 2 prime hydroxyl on the nucleotide in RNA is crucial to its enzymic activity. RNSA was used in the famous Anfinsen's experiment to demonstrate the fact that all information required for correct folding of a protein is contained in its primary amino acid sequence. Carboxypeptidase A is an important protein metabolizing enzyme in the digestive system. It is produced in the pancreas and it acts to hydrolyze the peptide bonds in the small intestine. It specifically cleaves at the carboxyl end of the peptide bond of aromatic residues and re residues having branched hydrocarbon side chains. Carboxypeptidase A is a metalloendopeptidase that uses the zinc in its active site to coordinate the enzyme action which takes place by the action of a water molecule on the sessile peptide bond through a tetrahedral intermediate.